The FT reported that VCs are sitting on a record cash pile in startup funding. In 2023, VC dry powder reached a record $300 billion. Grady, how do you look at GPs that are conserving cash in this market, given that most are still getting management fees off these funds? Well, first off, thanks guys for having me on. Um, and it's a good question. It's one we think about very often, as you guys can probably imagine, managing a fund of funds. Our focus, I mean, NVNG started investing a couple of years ago. So this isn't really come to a head for us. Most of our managers and the way that we pick managers, we we like managers that can fully raise their capital and we do not pay them to sit on the sidelines, right? If they are, and we do have a couple and we had a couple back in the day, right? Um, just learning the whys and why nots, establishing the regular cadence with our managers. We'll speak with them at least quarterly, as Victor could probably tell you. Understanding why they sit on the sidelines um, and the why is nots. And then importantly, so where are you spending that time and that effort? This is a management fee that is a loan to the venture firm from the LPs, right? It's a zero interest loan. How How is that going to come back to us? And that might not mean in returns today. It might not mean in deal flow today. But if you are a fund manager and you're sitting on 50% reserves right now and your investment term is kind of ending, what are your options? I mean, are your goals to hit reserve marks very quickly? Or are your goals to push those to later stage managers? Or what are you going to do with this management fee that we continue to pay you? And there are ways to generate value to LPs that are outside of just investing in the right companies on time. But it is it has become an interesting world where a lot of funds raised a lot of money and now they've made good investments or bad and they're still sitting on half. So like I said, at the end of the day, it's not what we pay our managers to do to sit and watch them. But maybe these fundraising cycles start to elongate. Maybe they go back to what we've seen 10 plus years ago and you start to see maybe some of that capital come back to LPs. Do you expect, Grady, uh, at some point, GPs to return that capital? I mean, we've seen this happen at some of the big ones already, right? Um, and some of the endowments we speak to. I mean, we're a $50 million fund. So speaking specifically to NVNG, no, I would not expect that. It's not what we're hoping for. Um, but in terms of some of these larger, more established managers and the market in general, Yes, I hope that they make the prudent decisions to return capital, open up some allocations for some of these bigger ones so they can start hunting again and, and making investments. But should they be at or near the end of their investment term? These are conversations that we at NVNG would start to have. Again, we're only a couple years into this, but going back to our old portfolio, absolutely. It'd be conversations that we're having with them right now. Um, what are the deals they can get for possibly that capital, right? Um, what are we going to do with our allocation? when they're not delivering it back. So fortunately for us, not today. Victor, when you look at your opportunity set of the startups that you can invest in, are you always determining that this year versus next year? Or are you just looking at the current market condition? I think that the the actual dry powder stats are kind of added a little bit. It looks like there's more than there actually are because I think, first of all, we had firms that were going back to the well every two years of the new fund, and now they've elongated that to every five years. So they're going from as fast as they could raise money to now they're going to as slow as they can raise money because they get liquidity and they need to show results. And so that, you know, if you take that number, you divide it by five and divide it by, instead of dividing it by two, that's a lot less money deployed per year. You also have in those stats, I think you have things included like Tiger, like OpenView, like firms that there may not be um, even yet publicly announced that they're not really active. And then there's also first and second time firms that were raised entirely off high net worth individuals that don't have any semblance of the DPI, um, that they don't have any money coming back to their LPs. So they're looking to stretch that capital as long as possible because they need to be active and need to show up thing to finally have some M&A or some IPOs in their portfolio before they can go back at this time to raise another fund. So there's that dry powder is a very, it's kind of a false sense of assurance of what's actually happening in the market. And so I, I look at that. I'm the first investor in a company almost always. Um, so we're, we need our companies almost always to raise future rounds of capital. I'm not going to, most companies won't be profitable after we invest. And I need to then understand like, Hey, what does that, what does that mean for the types of deals I can do for how they need to spend their money for how much capital? All they need to raise, and also for their valuations that I'm going to require to get in at, because there's more risk now. There's there's less likely that we can raise at a, as a premium competitive um, markup, and so 
even if you have an active fund, so we have we have like three more years of capital with our our, our cap uh, that our fund that we recently raised. We are still steady. We're steady deployers. And so if you were, if you have recently raised money in the past year or two, I think you're deploying, but it's steady. Our 2023 was the slowest pace we've ever had as far as deploying capital. And that matches with what I hear from my peers. I think probably Grady and Jason probably can kind of assess that from their, their networks too. But it feels like, you know, there's not a ton of pressure to figure the pace, but that people are more comfortable deploying. But it's, uh, you know, it's, it's not that for everybody. For a lot of these funds, they only have a few bullets left before they have to go back to the market and they don't want it. So that's, that's kind of how I see it. And that's why we have adapted uh, our investments because of that. And Jason, how do you look at your capital deployment schedule? Yeah, I've always been slow and steady. Um, and you have to play the game on the field. During peak ZERP, we didn't see a lot of deals we liked. We thought they were overpriced. And so I'll just give an example there uh, to your question. You know, if we have a company come to us and they say, well, we want a $20 million valuation. And I say, okay, what's the revenue? And they say, oh, we have, we're pre-launch. And I say, okay, pre-launch, um, no revenue. So, you know, infinity times revenue is your <laughs> valuation. Um, I tell you what, why don't we talk in a year? Um, or we'll talk six months after you launch the product, and we'll have some data there to talk about. So if the valuation sky high, it's not a former founder I've worked with, we're probably not going to make that jump. And we were a little bit quiet during those two years, I'd say 2020, 2021. We did do some secondary sales during that time, we were able to clear some positions, and we were able to help companies uh, raise money. So the, the managers uh, and LPs understand this, have many different job functions. One of them is meeting with companies and then placing bets. Another one is helping existing portfolio companies raise more money for a rainy day, which is exactly what happened. And uh, we feel pretty um, savvy right now uh, that we sold some shares during that period, got some DPI to our LPs, and uh, we were able to help companies raise, you know, what were to me mind blowing amounts of money you know, compared to the valuations, uh, compared to the actual traction of the companies. Today, um, and we'll just look at a non zerp environment when the market slowed down, we're seeing a lot of companies that are three developers, two developers, a designer working on a product, and they're raising a 5 million, and they only want to raise 250. And we say, Oh, how about 500k we will buy 10%. And they say, No, we just want 250. We don't want to dilute. We don't need it. Uh, and so the whole mind shift has, set, has changed. So what got us to this massive amount of dry powder? is like a really interesting question. Well, people wanted to put money to work and there was plenty of money around. So founders and GPs raised a ton of money. Now the market slowed down. Actually, the, the wise thing to do is to slowly deploy capital in great companies uh, and be patient. And so we wish m a couple of our companies that were burning capital too fast had done what VCs are doing here, which is going slower. And you're seeing like the laggards, even in the public markets uh, at the time we're taping this, like Snap and DocuSign are cutting like 9 and 10%, little tiny cuts, uh, you know, in terms of how bloated those companies probably are. And so put it all together, I think, net, 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 you, you have to play the game on the field. And really LPs, to your original question, um, to Grady, uh, and I'm an LP in uh, 24 funds, we're looking at, for myself, two numbers, cash in, cash out. That's all I care about. You can charge me whatever fees you want. You can charge me whatever carry you want. I'm going to judge you. I put in a dollar. You gave me, did you give me back two, three, four, five, ten, 10, or 20? And I've had funds. What I just described is a bunch of different funds I've been in. And when you give a dollar and get back 20, 10 years later, you feel pretty good about it. When you get back one and you get back three, you feel good about it. And when you feel, give, give one and you get back two, you're like, ah. And when you give one and you don't get back one, you're like, ah, maybe, yeah, we got we to gotta take a deeper dive here and click on it. Uh, so yeah, the, I, I wouldn't sweat the management fees. Uh, because as uh, I think Grady was saying, it's a loan. It is a no interest loan. I could see it becoming annoying if somebody had a lot of funds, and they stacked them and you're like, wow, you guys are taking down, you know, let's just take the case of interest and Horowitz or something, you know, whatever 10 billion under management, they have 20 billion under management, whatever it is now. Two and a half percent or three percent of that is a lot of money to be paying three hundred million dollars a year or six hundred million dollars a year. Who knows where those waterfalls are at with those? Man, that that could be infuriating to some folks if they weren't seeing performance. But if there's performance, nobody cares. That's what I've learned. If you win, who cares? Oh, you you were skiing for twelve weeks in Aspen. 
Uh, yeah, there was this negative story about you in the press. Oh, you're spicy on Twitter and you're talking about wars and, you know, politics and alienating people. Who cares? Money in, money out. Let's get back to work.